News Update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy. He's here. Welcome to the Barbados Today Evening Update for Tuesday, April 7th. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. We begin with news of police investigations into an attack of another senior citizen. According to police spokesman David Welch, a lady in her 60s from the Christchurch area was sprayed in the face with an unknown substance last Sunday and robbed of an undisclosed sum of money. The incident allegedly occurred around 3.45 p.m. The acting assistant superintendent tells Barbados Today that the bandit used several excuses in order to gain access to her house, one of which was that he had a package for her grandson that does not exist. He again called on residents, especially the elderly, to be mindful of anyone approaching their homes with claims of delivering packages or money. Anyone who is approached in such a manner, he says, should call police emergency number 211. Meantime, the police are investigating the robbery of a Canadian diplomat and his wife this morning. According to police, the incident occurred around midday in Barclays Park, East Coast Road, St. Andrew. The armed bandit robbed a couple of 400 Barbados dollars, 3,000 Guyanese dollars, a camera, and a watch. In news from the law courts, another police officer finds himself on the wrong side of the law, this time for domestic abuse. 28-year-old Special Constable Andrew Maynard of Lynch's St. Philip is charged with two counts of assault and one count of using threatening words. Maynard is also charged with assaulting his superior, Sergeant Ryan Brathwaite. He was granted $2,500 bail when he appeared in court today with one surety and will return to court on April 17. Meantime, Chief Executive Officer of Phoenix Airways will spend another 28 days behind bars. 27-year-old Neville Gums of South District St. George was remanded again today after he was unable to secure two sureties to post his $100,000 bail. He told Magistrate Graveney Bannister that he has no one in Barbados to post bail on his behalf. But that's not all. His attorney, Wilfred Abrams, recused himself from the case in which Gums is facing six charges of criminal deception and one count of evading liability. In other news, officials from the Barbados Agricultural Manufacturing Company are reporting a smooth start to this year's sugar harvest. The sugar crop finally got on the way this morning after more than a two-month delay. According to a factory worker at the Portville Sugar Factory in St. James, the crop began around 10 a.m. with trucks transporting cane from Duke's Plantation in St. Thomas and Buckley in St. George. The quest by Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean to acquire reparations from Europe intensifies in New York this week, and officials are optimistic as they prepare for the upcoming three-day reparations summit, which begins in Washington on Thursday. These two commissions are coming together to lay the foundation for what we hope will be a global summit in the next year. A global summit will clearly be one of the outcomes of the planning of this, of this summit, where commissions that are being established across Europe, and I should say at this stage, uh, there is now a European reparations commission that our colleagues in, in France, uh, in England, in Spain, and Portugal have come together to establish a European Union uh, reparations movement. We will then be able to invite our colleagues from Africa, Latin America, and we will meet in order to have this global summit to take the next steps forward. Prime Minister Frandall Stewart joins his CARICOM colleagues in Jamaica this week for talks with U.S. President Barack Obama. The Prime Minister is scheduled to address the summit on Thursday, where he is expected to speak on topics, competitiveness, prosperity, renewable energy, and security. From there, the Prime Minister embarks on his first official visit to Panama for the seventh summit of the Americas. 
In sports, Barbados's Carifta athletes are back home from St. Kitts after placing third in the games behind Jamaica and the Bahamas. Barbados copped 16 medals, seven of them gold. Traditional powerhouses Jamaica collected 85 medals and the Bahamians captured 31. Among the team touching down at the Grantley Adams International Airport this evening was long-distance sensation and this year's Austin Sealy Award recipient, Mary Fraser. The Darrell Jordan student took Bastia by storm, winning gold in the 800, 1500 and 3000 meters and in the process set personal best times and new national junior and senior records. Also in the party was Print King Mario Book who did the double by winning both 100 and 200 meters. The other gold medal winners returning was Javelin gold medalist Haley Matthews and Rivaldo Leacock, who won gold in the 400 meters hurdles. A proud Minister of Youth and Sports, Stephen Nashley, spoke with Barbados today ahead of their arrival. I think Barbados should be proud of the entire performance of the team because they go overseas as a team. And, of course, those that have been outstanding, we want to be able to give them kudos. But we also want to give, um, you know, warm congratulations and encouragement to the entire team, the officials, the coaches um, who have been involved in the preparation of the athletes. And uh, certainly want to commend them, not only the track and field, but, of course, we have to commend those who would have been involved in the swimming uh, events as well. They've, they've done Barbados Proud as well. And also, we would have had um, the chess uh, championship being done in Barbados. So all of these athletes should be warmly commended. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados, are you ready for Movado? FAS Entertainment presents the Digicel Reggae Beach Party Sunday, April 19th at the all-new Reggae Island from 3 p.m. Featuring the new sensation, Gully Bop. Every girl want to walk off of Pop Con. Plus, Lad Pipe and Status, Brutal, Kurt Brown, Mad Dog, Peter Ram, Celebrity Face, Lady Essence, Stiffy, Mole, and Slims, MC Jamar the Star, The Digicel Reggae Beach Party, Sunday, April 19th, at the all-new Reggae Island, Pierhead Lane, Lower Bay Street, from 3 p.m. It begins here. A test of character. A test of focus. A test of will. A test of resilience. A test of courage. Barbados, the test is on. West Indies, England, May 4th, at the Mecca. Tickets, 30, 40, 50, and $60. It's on. Are you Barbados is on. Pick up in Haiti now, where at least six people lost their lives as heavy rains continue to drench the country. The deaths occurred in City Soleil, Delma, and Carrefour. According to officials, over 8,000 homes were also flooded, and 245 families had to be relocated as the rainy season continues. And finally, on the international scene, Kenya today remembered the victims of last week's attack at Garissa University. Hundreds attended a candlelight vigil in the capital, Nairobi, in their memory by setting up a temporary shrine of crosses and candles. Photographs of the 148 victims were also on display. The assault on the university was the deadliest in Kenya by the Al-Shabaab. 
And that's our Barbados Today evening updates, but you can join us again tomorrow morning. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 101 Online TV, as well as Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. See you tomorrow. This news update is brought to you by... So, I'm meeting Rico later. Gotta check in with the girls, but first, let me check my usage on the MyLime app. Now, what should I wear? <laughs> Hashtag sexy.